This is a uh, 22 year old female who presented to my foot and ankle clinic with increasing pain and developing deformity to the lateral aspect of her right calcaneus. She identified presenting initially with an injury two years ago while uh, performance on a trampoline, which did not suggest any large trauma, but a benign presentation and ultimately was seen by a colleague in the community who did obtain some x-rays, but no uh, follow-up was entertained because of pandemic situation and restriction to clinical care. She was ultimately seen in my clinic upon referral where these initial x-rays that you can see on the right were uh, obtained confirming this uh, notably erosive expansile cystic lesion that seemed to involve the majority of the calcaneus presented. Soft tissue envelope looked intact and there did not appear to be any type of uh, heterotopic ossification, so this appeared to be contained well within the calcaneus. In discussion with the patient, um, we did have concern about this presentation, particularly with differential diagnosis as well as the anatomy involved in how we were gonna handle proceeding with initial biopsy, uh, definitive treatment and surgery based on biopsy and uh, proceeding forward. Uh, patient uh, declined any type of, interestingly, of initial bone biopsy to rule out malignancy. And in review of these films and our consideration of differential diagnosis, we presented the concept of curopsy, which essentially is attempt at cure of this type of lesion with biopsy at the same time. And in cure, essentially uh, harvesting uh, appropriate grafting for tumor uh, identification, and then going ahead and doing the definitive uh, reconstruction at the same operative setting. Uh, there is supportive literature uh, specific to this type of disease process, in fact, that prompted our consideration for this approach. Uh, the uh, attempt with the technique was to limit or mitigate any tumor spillage as much as possible. And this brought into the idea of using the abetus bone graft harvester as an ideal approach and technique to both one, obtain the necessary uh, biopsy of tissue two, to eradicate as much of the tumor burden as possible from this, and three, utilize it in fact to uh, obtain from a healthy site autologous bone to reconstruct this area. Ultimately, um, in the care of this case, the, the challenge is, is the anatomy and uh, obtaining appropriate treatment uh, based on it involving the entire calcaneus doing an oncologic or on block technique would require essentially removal of the entire calcaneus for which reconstruction would be extremely challenging in an otherwise healthy 22 year old female. Uh, one could consider some type of 3D printed calcaneus and also ultimately a patient could have considered a transtibular amputation, particularly if the biopsy suggested malignancy. Patient agreed with this technique of utilizing the abetus bone graft harvester both in uh, performance of its preparation, biopsy, as well as its reconstruction. And so patient was brought into the operating room and under general anesthesia through the standard percutaneous small incision approach with porticotomy into the lateral wall of the calcaneus. The avitus bone graft harvester was employed to start evacuating this pathologic tissue. In order to introduce the uh, vetus bone graft harvester, a one centimeter to 1.5 centimeter uh, linear incision was made along the lateral hind foot over the oscalcis, uh, and this incision was deepened. We utilized the pilot hole creator from a vetus to create a small fenestration in the lateral wall of the calcaneus, and then introduced the bone graft harvester to um, go ahead and obtain and evacuate the specimen both for uh, uh, biopsy but also for uh, reducing tumor burden. Uh, this is done without having to pass this instrument in and out of this fenestration multiple times which again reduces the trauma to the tissue but also reduces the risk for spillage of tumor into the surrounding soft tissue. Uh, this is able to be performed over approximately a five to seven minute process 
the overall anatomy and structure of the calcaneus was preserved as we evacuated the contents of the calcaneus. And as such, the procedure was considered to be uh, pretty much trauma-free with reduced risk of tumor spillage as instruments were not being passed in and out of and was able to be performed in an extremely expedient fashion. Initially, we appreciated this tissue to be quite fibrous and uh, uh, a vascular. There was not a lot of marrow aspirate that came with this, but over time, as we proceeded with the curettement, you can appreciate what was evacuated was this almost mixoid cartilaginous type tissue that grossly gave us concern that maybe this could represent some type of chondrosarcoma. But uh, as we evacuated more, it appeared very fibrous, dysvascular with no evidence of bone marrow or aspirate. And you can appreciate um, the collection that was achieved in the uh, harvester chamber. Uh, the x-ray imaging that is performed on the top, you can see our performance of the evacuation. The harvester has a wonderful sharp curette end that allows us to go ahead and essentially scrape the inner walls of the calcaneus. We can appreciate uh, tactically the um, uh, constitution of this wall and mitigate any type of pathologic fracturing in its performance. And, uh, and this is the uh, harvested material pathologic that was sent to physical pathology. Once we completed the complete evacuation of the pathologic tissue and were comfortable with this, we utilized the distal tibia and its uh, metathesis to acquire uh, healthy uh, cancellous bone with bone marrow aspirate. Uh, we utilized a new harvester to reduce risk, obviously, of cross-contamination of an area of tumor to an area of non-tumor, and so a new harvester was employed. So, uh, not dissimilar to what we did in the calcaneus, the uh, Avedis uh, pilot hole uh, creator was introduced to create window fenestration in the distal tibia. The Avedis bone graft harvester was then introduced into the metaphysis of the distal tibia to evacuate a, a, an autologous uh, cancellus and bone marrow aspirate uh, product. We spent time utilizing this harvester and its curette to actually scrape the endoscule walls of the uh, distal metaphysis because we know we do know that a number of stem cells reside within this layer and we find it beneficial in augmenting healing. And you can see the material that was accumulated from the uh, distal uh, tibial metaphysis, which was quite um, uh, significant. Upon uh, completion of the harvesting, we were able to obtain approximately 15 cc's of cancellus uh, bone with uh, associated bone marrow aspirate. This is separated both in the harvester uh, chamber with the cancellus bone and separated with the non-concentrated pure aspirate that comes with this as well. The outcome of this surgery was that the biopsy came back, fortunately for this individual, as a benign desmoid fibroma, which is a very rare expansile benign lesion of the calcaneus. This can be seen throughout the entire skeletal system, commonly seen in the mandible or the pelvic area, but there is reports on the calcaneus. Um, ultimately, the challenge with these cases is that there is no high recurrence rate and the patient is aware of this, but at 16 months out, she is asymptomatic doing well with an excellent reconstitution and preservation of the calcaneus and we continue to surveil her on an ongoing process. And fortunately with the technique that we employ with the venous bone graft harvester and its minimally traumatic approach, uh, harvest site pain is limited at best to none and in this case the patient had literally no harvest site pain. And fortunately also, again, interestingly, based on the approach taken to the calcaneus, did not have any notable postoperative pain even to this site. So the Avitas bone graft harvester has become an instrumental part of my practice. One, because it does serve to achieve the gold standard of autologous bone graft for my my fusions that are commonly done in the foot and ankle, but it has now advanced itself to address situations of tumor burden as well as infection burden. So we can now introduce not only in this case as presented evacuation of tumor burden, but we are also doing, doing this with osteomyelitis and evacuating necrotic infected bone burden 
in an attempt to, again, preserve anatomy and function that is commonly lost when we do more aggressive debridements or amputations.